It was a day that will live on in infamy. <laughs> a deafening silence coming from my mother who has never in her life been at a loss for words. She sat at the kitchen table, sipping her coffee, thumbing through the paper, and devising her plan. Clad in a pair of neon umbro shorts and a t-shirt, this penultimate 90s mother was about to knock the entire Dilthey family on their tail. Over and over, she had asked each of her four darlings to clean our rooms. As the only daughter, oldest, and self-appointed secondary matriarch, I had advised the others to heed her warning, but it wasn't sinking in at all. Now, to be honest, at the time, I was probably more concerned that the new kids on the block were covering my walls to get caught up with what was covering the floor, but I had mastered my mother's patented quick cleanup trick. Oh my god, she would yell. All 56 of the people that I invited over for that cute little get together are here, get moving. We would then be advised to grab the nearest famous bar bag, God rest its Midwestern soul, and file as much as we could and toss it in a closet. This system has been a go-to for years, and I guarantee you, if you go to my parents' house right now, you will find a 1989 file in its original condition, despite the fact that the entire family moved in 2001. <laughs> the silence was too much. I knew she was going to blow, so I ran up the steps, started filing, kicking everything under the bed, and I heard the fateful call, hey, who wants to go to the pool? My father, poor sap, he worked 80 hours a week. He never complained about the cold plate of food left for him to microwave. Not a word about getting his hair cut by my mother, who had no training, formal or informal. He never even mentioned the time he got water jump ropes and a hula hoop for Father's Day. He just wanted to enjoy, enjoy a Sunday off, and two dummies thought it'd be a good idea to go along. As the station wagon of jolly pool, fools pulled away from the front of the house, I could fear, feel my mother's anger seeping through the hallway, like a thick black smoke permeating the walls. You two, get outside and read a book! She bellowed from the bottom of the steps. Uh, what's happening here? We'd never been told to read a book in our entire lives. Let's be honest, we were totally the kids that cheated on the book at summer reading club so that we could get a free personal pan from Pizza Hut. I grabbed a Judy Bloom something or other and headed outside. We were told to stay on the patio and not say a word. I made it exactly three sentences when I heard the first crash. I looked up to see my mother's bedroom windows being flung wide open and the screens come tumbling two stories down. Shirts, shorts, shoes, and underoos were floating through the air and landing in bushes. Next came G.I. Joe, He-Man, his good pal Teddy Ruxpin, and Elf, all took death the flying leaps from the second floor. Baseball cards, book reports, pens and pencils were next. What had started as my mother being a little bit aggravated had turned into a full-blown nervous breakdown. You all think you're so smart. Oh, I'm going to show you who's smart. I'm smart. Let me tell you something. I tell you to clean up. You clean up. Do you understand me? Oh, you think this is funny? I'm going to show you funny. I'm hilarious. Ha, 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 ha. She went on and on. She was talking to no one. The house had been evacuated. We were on a gag order down below. The more it went on, she became more and more enraged. As abruptly as it started, it ended. The windows were slammed down. She disappeared. Suddenly, the back door opened again, and my father and my two youngest brothers appeared with looks of pure horror on their faces. Slowly, my father assessed the situation, walked over to me as the eldest of the four. He presumed I'd be able to shed a bit of light on what had happened that afternoon. <laughs> Colleen, sending my crap out here. He legitimately feared finding his own BVDs in that pile. But really, had he lost his mind? There was no way I was saying a word. Then the door opened again, and there she stood with a half apron around her waist and a fresh coat of Revlon orange flip on her lips. A hybrid of June Cleaver and that terrifying clown from It. <laughs> well, what 
do we have here? I guess you've all had plenty of time to take a look at what I was able to accomplish while you were at the pool today. No one uttered a sound. We all just stood there blank-faced. Perhaps you didn't hear me when I told you to clean up. This time, I went easy on you, and I threw it out the back. Next time, I'm not going to be so kind. It's all going out the front window. Now clean it up! <laughs> she closed the door and left the five of us there to decipher through the mess. She sat at the kitchen table and watched us take 16,000 trips up and down the stairs like pathetic little UPS drivers without the benefit of the nice brown uniforms or trucks. As the weeks passed, the summer dwindled. We'd all but forgotten about that dreadful day. We went on about our lives until one day that little red light was flashing on the answering machine. Uh, hi, Colleen. Um, this is Polly Doodle, and there's something wrong with your answering machine. Your mom is screaming at your grandma about something. Um, call me back. Bye. Huh, my mom said. That's weird. I wonder what she's talking. Oh, my God. Colleen, press the button. Reluctantly, I moved my finger toward the button, knowing there was no turning back. Hello! My mother screamed. <laughs> Maureen, honey, what's the matter? My nanny so very innocently implored. What's the matter? I'll tell you what's the matter. It's these ungrateful kids. I'd been asking them to clean their rooms, but did anybody do it? No! Because good old mom is always here to clean it up. Well, guess what? I'm cleaning it up all right. It's all going out the window. Maureen, honey, where is Dennis? Who? Oh, Bert Lancaster? Well, he's relaxing at the pool. Oh, boy, is he going to be relaxed when he gets home. He can relax his little ass up and down the stairs with all of this stuff. Because I'm telling you right now, Mom, I am not doing this again. Oh, no, next time it's going out the front window. So everybody in St. Louis Hills knows that the Delphi kids are a bunch of slobs. <laughs> Beep. <laughs> Most run and hide. Most people would be terrified about what others were thinking about them. But not my mom. No, she laughed. She's always lived her life guided by her faith in God and the love for her family and not the opinions or judgment of others. We learned a lesson on Devonshire Avenue that day and nothing took flight again. But the real lesson for me wasn't learned for many more years. I heard so often during those tumultuous teenage years, someday you'll understand what it means to love someone so much that it hurts. Someday you will understand how I feel. I hope that one day your heart is as full as mine. My mother was just about the same age as I am now the day that she aired the Dilthey's Dirty Laundry. Now as a mom to three boys and a brand new baby girl, I understand the occasional parental meltdown. I understand <laughs> what kind of satisfaction she must have gotten from throwing all of that stuff out the window. I understand the undying need to drive in a minivan by yourself with Tupac blaring. I understand what it feels like to eat a candy bar in a bathroom so that you don't have to share. And I understand that even when you are the most tired that you have ever been in your life, there is nothing like little hands on your face and sweet little lips whispering, good night, mommy, I love you. Right now, my heart is at its fullest because every day I'm learning to be less selfish, I'm learning to be stronger, I'm learning to be less angry and kinder, I'm learning to be a mother. And yes, after all these years, mom, I love you more than anybody in the world. And there's no one that I would rather have than you. And to my handsome sons and darling daughter, beware. I've learned from the best in the business, kids. <laughs> and hell hath no fury like an overworked mother in a two-story house with easily removable window screens. 